This is a video for chapter three in drawing. And um, I'm basically going to do a um, chapter three, con a geometric construction hack for $3, no, hang on, $3.50 it cost me. So that compass was $1. And this set square was $1.25 and that was $1.25. So there you go, $3.50 hack. All right, question number one is um, bisect this line. Now, bisecting a line is uh, you don't just get a, a ruler and draw the midpoint. Uh, you're supposed to bisect it with a perpendicular line. So to do that, we use a compass for this. The instructions for this are in the student notes. And um, the way to do it is basically to set up the compass so that it's passed halfway. So set it up on one end of the line. And uh, in fact, the further you are past halfway, the more accurate it's going to be. So if you pull that out a bit and draw yourself a construction line, which is our first line, and then another construction line from the other side, which is also an arc, producing those two curves. And then we can use the um, connections for the intersection between those two, those two intersect here and here, and then we're drawing a line through those two. All right, now when you do, when you uh, submit your notes, you, you'll be doing this on paper and you submit this actual piece of paper. We need to see these construction lines. So we, we need to see this arc from the compass and this one as well. And even uh, we'll be looking around to see if we can see the, the points where the compass is touching the paper. So don't um, just sort of rough it. We want to be able to see the construction. However, the construction is supposed to be light. And the line that you're tr supposed to draw is heavy. So try and make a difference between the, the light construction and the heavy uh, final line. All right, so that's exercise one. That's it. Exercise two. This time we have a, uh, it's actually asking you to do exactly the same thing, bisect the arc using the example given, which is that arc. And the method is absolutely identical. So the fact that it's an arc has absolutely no difference to the, to, um, the technique that you're using. You just make, need to make sure that that compass is well and truly past halfway. This would be really bad if I used the same radius that I had from before, because it barely makes it. And uh, it'd be more accurate if I made myself a bigger arc. So let's widen it out a bit. All right, now I have my two intersection points here and here, and then I can follow those through. Make sure that the line that you're putting in is darker than the other ones. And that's our bisection line. So I must see construction lines here. And outlines is what we call the uh, the lines that we're actually drawing or trying. That's what we are trying to achieve. All right, number three. This time we're going to make an application of the bisection lines. That is, we're going to use these two um, lines that cut the circle. They're called chords. And by bisecting each chord, we'll find the center of the circle. So, back to the compass. Pick a distance which is past our way. If you go about three quarters of the distance, it's, it's fairly nice uh, sort of compromise um, or a bit more.
compass doesn't have a very sharp point. I think it's like a child's safety compass. So I think I should be pretty safe with it. Can't stab anybody with it. So these connection points here and here, intersection of those two arcs. That is the bisection of the first line. Now extend that past the middle of the big circle because we're trying to find the middle. And then these bisection points between here. All right, and that helps us to find the center of the circle, which is the bisection of those two. No, it's the intersection of those two bisecting lines. There you go. So that's exercise three. All right, so I think you're probably getting a, an idea of um, how this works now, because you you should be showing all these construction lines. See, there's quite a bit of construction lines going on here. There's one, two, three, four arcs. Then there's two bisection lines. And all of that was to find the center of the circle. That was the goal of this exercise. Where is the center? All right. Now, in the next um, problem, we're um, being asked to bisect the by bisect that angle. So, um, how do we do that? Well, because bisection is independent of whether it's a line or not, you can just bisect anything, as long as they're equidistant. So the first thing I need to do is set myself up a distance, maybe close to the length of this C1, like that, and then I can bisect the arc from here to here. So this time I bisect between those two points, about three quarters of it. Keep the radius to do the other side and now we can bisect we can draw a line that goes through my pilot pencil just ran out of the lead and look at that it goes all through those three points which is how it should and we've bisected the angle. Look at the construction. I should see all that construction in your um, when you hand it in. Now, uh, how to do this? Where, where did that information come from? How do, how do we know how to do this? This is explained in the student notes. So you got to read your notes. So see your notes. Basically, um, you'll be following the notes exactly for all the exercises we've done so far. All right, like the, the next one, which is uh, duplicate this angle. How do we duplicate an angle? Now, how do we do that? That is in the notes. Let's go and have a look at the notes and, and see uh, how that's done. One mouse. Now, Okay, so go to the um, interpret technical drawing student notes, not the student workbook, that's the one we're working in now, but the actual notes booklet. And we want to go to chapter three, which is uh, geometric construction. So you can see some of the stuff that we've already been doing here. Um, actually, gone a bit too far. There we go. So duplicate and give an angle, that's the one we're on right now. There's the bisection of the circle, um, which is done a different way. Well, it's not really different. It's They didn't arc all the way back to here to show three points. I like to have three points because it kind of like triple checks everything. But anyway, they just they just um, made one piece on that side, and then you can follow that through. It's the same thing. All right, now this is duplicate the circle. So what? how do we do this? Uh, duplicate, duplicate an arc, sorry. So <clears throat> what they've done here is they've just picked off a distance, a, a circle, by, by drawing here at the center B. So with B as the vertex, that's vertex means um, the point on the compass. Um, go make an arc. It's a bit rough there. And then what we want to do is actually measure how long that arc is with 
dividers or a compass or something. And, uh, and then we can duplicate it. So what's going on here is this is the one we're starting with and on your right hand side this is um, what you're drawing. So first of all start off with a line, yeah we can do that, that's easy enough. Then draw an arc of a certain radius, yep that's what we've got over here with the same radius as we drew on the original. Then we measure the length to the other line on the original and then we measure that length off to here on your new one and then you can draw the line through the new one. All right, so basically draw an arc, take the length of that arc and then draw the triangle. All right, let's there we go. Okay, it's all compass tricks as as um, most of it is. But the first job is just to draw that line, which is line BC. Happens to be yeah, 45 mils long. Now it doesn't have to be exactly the same angle because it doesn't actually say that you need to make the same angle. Then we draw. Then we draw a arc. And the uh, point of the arc is to be long enough to make an accurate measurement, so make it fairly long, right up close to the end of the line. And then we're going to follow that while it's still on your compass, before you move your compass, put it up here as well. And then we take this length, which is intersecting at point A. Here's my cheap compass, you can see it's pretty ugly. Right. And there we have our intersection point, which we can produce our second line. So that's duplication of the angle, uh, exactly according to the notes. So most of these questions you can just follow directly from the notes to explain to you. Uh, this next one, divide into five parts. Well, I mean, you could just go and grab a, a ruler and say, hmm, this thing is uh, 98 millimetres long, divide by 5, get out the calculator. That's one way to do it. But that's not the intention here. We're trying to do things using compass tricks. So um, to do that, what we're going to do is, is um, draw a line somewhere else, and we divide that into five parts and then um, carry those back to the first line. So let's have a look in the next again. All right, now this time we're um, Oh, this one just says seven parts, doesn't matter. So we have a line, we then draw a line randomly at an angle, but we are able to set this one off with a divider seven times. Um, then we draw parallel lines back to that to uh, get our line. So this is going to show us a couple of tricks uh, to do with triangles, which um, you'll be using that quite a bit in a lot of the other exercises. Okay, so that was step number one from the notes. We just had a look at the notes then. Step number one was to draw another line at an angle. So it doesn't really matter what angle this is. I'm just going to draw some line at some angle. That'll do. So there's our line at an angle. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to divide this into five parts. Now it doesn't matter if we make our parts really big or really small, although we can't make them so big that the five parts is going to go off the page. So it needs to be about a fifth of our new line, so maybe about that should do us. Alright, so now I'm going to use the compass as a divider. A divider is basically a 
length. So I've drawn one. Now I use the point on the compass and put it right where the last arc was and do this five times. One, two, three. A good guess, wasn't it? Five. So I've divided my second line five times and now I'm going to bring those lines back to my original line because this is meant to line up with the end point so I can get the angle of that line straight away by drawing back to the end of the line. Now how do I do a set of parallel lines? Because I want to do parallel lines to this line that I just drew, this one to the end, and I want them all parallel. How do I make them all parallel? Ah, I'm glad you asked. That's why we have two squares. We have a long one and a short one. Watch this trick. I can set up angle radius. Brand new dollar twenty-five set square. Right, so I'm going to use one set square as if I was at a. Look at that, pretty good. I'm using it like a T-square, so I set that other set square up and hold this set square still, and then as I move this one in, it's going to give me a set of parallel lines. So all I have to do now is line them up. A little trick there, using two set squares to draw a set of parallel lines by using one set square like you would a T-square and they uh, just move the other one, the 90 degree one um, using uh, the first set square as a, as a base so keep your hand on that first set square of course if it moves you're in trouble uh, but we use that trick quite a bit in a lot of the construction problems in this chapter alright that's the end of this video